Here's your five minute breakdown. It's Friday at five, folks. Good evening, everyone. My name is Rick Travis, and today we're gonna to be looking at the mismanagement of wildlife in urban cities in this state. We'll examine the political terrain from your local gun show to your local municipality to the proposed seizure from the federal level of every firearm in California. Congressmen are trying to take those rights away. Additionally, we'll be speaking to you about business affiliates supporting the California Rifle Pistol Association, but first, I would like to talk to you about membership in the California Rifle Pistol Association. The CRPA has been promoting firearm safety, shooting sports, competitions, hunting and conservation, and the defense of all of those for almost 150 years. Membership in the California Rifle and Pistol Association is what makes this Herculean effort possible in these times where the very foundation of our Bill of Rights is being challenged on a daily basis. To those of you watching who are members, I offer on behalf of the entire organization our sincere thanks. To those who have not become a member, I ask that you consider that for less than 10 cents a day, you're taking an active part in the defense of your passion and your rights. Please see the link in the description below to learn more about how to become a member. Additionally, consider during this holiday season giving a membership as a gift for a loved one, friend, coworker, or neighborhood. Nothing could be more priceless than the gift of freedom. Statewide, people in the urban environment are losing their pets to the local invasive coyote populations. Many are told by their local government that having a pet in the backyard makes the owner responsible for the death of that pet. That type of logic or illogical statement is akin to saying that when someone kidnaps a loved one in that same backyard, that you're an accessory to the crime. Makes no sense at all. If you're a victim or want to get involved in pushing back against your local municipalities and the state and demanding action, email us at the link below. Kevin. One of the things that is troubling to me is, you know, I, I just got done going to my local city council meeting because I've had three encounters in my city where I've lived for over 40 years. You know, and one of the things I said at, at that meeting that you were at as well was, you know, four years I ran cross country down in an estuary in an open, you know, zoned area where you would expect to see wildlife because that's what that estuary is. It's a, it's a wildlife preserve. And I always wanted to see coyotes. You know, I'm not against that predator, you know, but it has a place and that place is in the wild. And in four years, I saw one. And I ran six days a week for four years. Saw one. You know, now in my urban setting, which is far removed from that wildlife preserve, by a couple of miles, I'm seeing three and four at a time, two to three times a week. And unfortunately, sometimes running with a neighbor's pet in their mouths that they've killed that they're going to go feed on. That's not normal. Yeah, and I think that's a question that we kind of need to re-ask because uh, we have asked that question before. Uh, I think we need to ask it again because as these actions become more and more irregular, um, there's going to be some long-term uh, consequences. Um, I don't really want to see those consequences, and, and I, I mean, I definitely grew up hearing coyotes yipping because they got a kill uh, on a nightly basis, living on, living on a golf course, which is a natural waterway. Uh, that's where they tended to gather and hunt, and guess what they're hunting? Uh, they're hunting people's pets. Uh, I think it's pretty tragic um, because, you know, we view our pets as family members, and that becomes a, a pretty big ordeal. Gun shows are under attack. And those who seek to remove your ability to access train to be safer, gear that makes you and the public safer, ammunition that is safer, and firearms that are safer, are working to deny access to these venues under the guise of making us all safer. Taking these away does not make any of us safer. Local municipalities are also moving against allowing any new firearms related businesses in their communities. The latest example is the city of Oxnard, who is holding a public meeting on Tuesday the 27th. Look at the details below for more details, follow our alerts, and show up and make a difference at these events. It's your rights on the line. Welcome to this edition of CRPA News Alert. I'm Rick Travis, Executive Director for the California Rifle Pistol Association. I'm happy today to have with me Tiffany Chevron with Michelle and Associates who will be discussing the case at Oxnard that we are facing here in California, one of several cities trying to outlaw 
FFLs, and other gun-related businesses. In addition to what's happening in Oxnard, we have come full circle once again to the topic of gun shows. There will be another meeting with the Board of Supervisors at the Ventura County Fair Boards on Tuesday, November 27th. That's in the Derby Club at 9 a.m., and I want to encourage anyone who can make it to the meeting to please attend. These shows need as much support from the community as possible, whether you're a regular attendee or don't visit them at all. These efforts are an attack on the rights of all Californians, and in case you didn't know, we now have a sitting governor who, as the lieutenant governor, was already writing official letters to the Agricultural District's Board of Directors that manage these fairgrounds, urging them to stop the gun shows on fairgrounds property. So, this is a fight that will seemingly continue and most likely expand, which is why we need the community to speak out as much as possible. The way that you can do that is by visiting crpa.org and list all the different ways that you can contribute, whether it be showing up to the meeting or becoming a business affiliate in order to spread the message that CRPA has to offer. This is the Ventura Gun Show Alert. I'm Rick Travis, Executive Director of the California Rifle Pistol Association, and with me today is our Advocacy and Outreach Manager, Kevin Small. Welcome, Kevin. Thank you. So, Kevin, we have seen a concerted effort by the anti-left um, 2A agenda coming against us at gun shows, trying to remove these. Under the guise of safety, it seems like they will cherry pick and use any event that they can or any opportunity they can to try to close these down. We've seen it in Orange County, the attempts made. We've seen what happened in Del Mar. And now we're at Ventura, which unfortunately is a site of a tragic um, incident that just happened a few weeks ago but had absolutely zero to do with this gun show. What is happening on Tuesday? And why is it so important for our members and our community to be there in strength? Well, it is definitely a concerted effort and something that we've seen with every single meeting like this that we've gone to. Uh, as the meetings tend to progress, uh, more and more people from uh, that group come. Uh, so whereas two months ago there were just a few last month, uh, there were more and we're expecting more this month. Uh, what is actually going on in the meeting this month, uh, we are expecting a report from the ad hoc committee that was looking into the validity of the shows themselves. Um, and like you said, with the tragedy that we had uh, this earlier this month, we are expecting a lot of organizations to be sending people there, which, which is kind of uh, interesting that they do go under the guise of safety because uh, these gun shows are really the best place for people to get uh, safety. Um, when it comes to any kind of training, that's promoting safety. When it comes to uh, just general safety tips for the range or at home, all of these things are offered at these shows. These are the best places for people to go for that purpose. Uh, and under the guise of safety to try and get the shows removed would actually have the opposite effect. Well. For the past nine months, I was talking about the elections, and they're now over. And I didn't have to wait long to say, I told you so. Votes matter, and what happens in California affects the whole nation. The fight to keep many of the firearms you use safely is facing a proposal from California Congressman Eric Swalwell of the 15th District in Alameda and Contra Costa counties. He's proposing a $15 billion, that's right, with a B, billion, dollar Australian-style government buyout back of your firearms with criminal penalties for those who do not comply. He's been on the liberal media roadshow, floating this nationwide during the purported downtime in the national legislature. The assault on not just the Second Amendment, but your other constitutional rights that affect all Americans is on. Be sure to follow us on all of our social media platforms, that being Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and CRPA TV on YouTube.